Hi guys, welcome back to the Rustic Handyman. Today I'm going to be working on this 2003 Ford F350 6.0 liter diesel. I'm going to be replacing the oil pan. My son started on this project quite a while back and was unable to finish it as you can see. Get to the oil pan, it's a little challenging. To change the oil pan, you have to lift the motor a few inches, so I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm not sure you have to take out all these bolts, but I went ahead and took them out just to be safe. These are the motor mount bolts that you have to take off on this cross member. You can't hardly get an air impact in this area. You have to jack the motor up. I, I measured and just took a board, placed the board on my 310 jack here on the the crank pulley and jacked up the motor about two to three inches if I had to estimate. Just showing you how the motor mount separates from the cross member there. So I worked on this truck quite a while last night. This is my son's truck and he started working on it several weeks ago and ran into a problem with about five bolts on the oil pan that is underneath this steel strut right here that goes in between both sides and you can't get to them. They're where your mounting bolts are. He actually took all the bolts out and replaced them except for this area right here and he couldn't get them out. They were rounding off and, and they're a different size. Right there you can see one and he actually tried to slot them and everything and was not able to get them out. So he put those new bolts in the rest of it and just let it sit. But as you can see, this oil pan is just bad shape. It's rusting apart. And pretty soon there's gonna have a catastrophic failure and the oil's just gonna probably come running out. So um, what I've decided to do, which is what I did last night, was start cutting these bolt heads off. And if I'm thinking right, the inner oil pan should, this pan should drop down and then I should still have some of the studs from the little bolts sticking out once I take the inner oil pan off and I should be able to get a hold of them. If not, I'll just have to drill them out. But what I know is they're going to have to be gotten out somehow and there's no way to get Tim to drill them out. So I'm carefully taking my torque, trying to protect my hydraulic lines right there. And there's some wiring harness behind there. The other side isn't too bad, but this the passenger side has really got a lot going on there. So I got about three bolts to take out of this side. I pretty much got the driver's side done. I'm gonna to touch those up a little bit more. Then I'm gonna drain my oil and try to drop this pan. We'll see how it all comes out. Of course, it's a nice windy day, which wind is not your friend when you're trying to use a torch. You really gotta know where you're going when you bring a torch in there because you don't have a whole lot of time and you can do a lot of damage. And you also gotta make it sure it's really straight because you don't wanna burn through your oil pan and start screwing up your surfaces. So I took my torch and I cut the heads off of about five bolts that were above that cross member that you couldn't get to. Then I was able to pry it off of those, uh, the remnants of those studs. Then take all the other bolts out that I could get to that was already replaced before. So now I'm just ready to drop it down. It's actually hanging, but now I just gotta get that. There's a um, pickup tube inside here. It takes an eight millimeter. So 
once you get it dropped down a little bit, you gotta reach in here and get those out so you can finish taking the pan out. Two eight millimeter screws and then that suck up tube should fall, come down, and then you should be able to take that out just like that. Woohoo! That was a job. You'll reuse this tube. Except for the fact that it looks like they have some of their um, some of the wiring harness attached to the side of this. So I'm gonna have to take a nut out so it'll release that, and then it should come right out. That's your inner oil pan. So here's the deal. This is how it sits up on the bottom of your motor. The lower oil pan attaches to this, and these bolts right here we could not get to and we could not get them to turn they were just rusted in there and they weren't going to move so luckily the way this oil pan works i burned them off and now i have some studs sticking out which hopefully i can get a hold of if not we'll just drill them out You could probably use mineral spirits or solvent. This is where the wiring harness was hooked to, but number one, I'm not gonna try to get it hooked back up to it when I'm putting it in. I'll just zip by the wiring harness or something. All right, give you an update on what I got so far. Yesterday I got, I think they call it the inner oil pan or the upper oil pan got it out and as I was explaining was we were able to get most of the screws out except for these two here and these three here that were underneath the cross member as I watched other videos on YouTube no one seemed to have any issues with that but I imagine it's a pretty common problem today I'm going to be trying to figure out how to get these screws out and then start getting the new seals back in and getting it put back together So the studs won't come out of the aluminum. All right, I'm getting ready to drill these out. I'm probably gonna try to use a hand drill since I don't have a drill press. And I'm gonna use these center punches. I'll link these in the description. couple things about drilling out these studs that I cut off. See how these, these holes are right in the center of the, so you want to make sure you're centered. Because we're going to take a bigger size drill bit, slightly smaller than the actual hole, and then we're going to try to drill out all these threads. Hopefully we'll bring the threads out with it. If not, then we're going to run a tap down there after we get all of them drilled. But I just wanted to bring that up that um, you want to make sure you get that center punch in the middle and that your drill bit actually starts in the center. All right, so I got my first holes through there. And all of them really came out pretty good. Um, pretty much dead center, which is what you want. And now I'm just going to try to drill the rest of that out. I think I'm to the point I'm going to try um, to get a tap to run down through there. All right, I just got back. I had to go get a tap. These are metric screws that were in these holes and they were, what, six millimeter times one millimeter thread. I 
I'll run this tap in all the holes just to make sure they're cleaned out real good. All right, I'm gonna drill the holes out with the size that they recommend to tap a six millimeter hole. Okay, so I was showing you a close up here of what I've been working on. So when I drilled those holes out, I didn't quite get them centered. And so there was part of the stud still in there. So I'm basically peeling it off the edge of the threads, trying to get the pieces out because I don't want part of the screw and part of the aluminum for threads. So once I get that out, I'm gonna see how much threads I have left. And I'm either gonna helicoil them or I possibly might move up to a bigger size screw. I'm not sure yet. This is some of the pieces I dug out. All right guys, explain what I'm gonna do here. So these two holes and these three holes, once I drilled out the, the screws that were stuck in here, they wallered out and so the M6 screws that we we're going to use and that were originally in the oil pan are too loose. They're not going to be secure enough. So I went ahead and I was able to go, this is an M6 times one millimeter and they make an M7 times one millimeter, which is a thicker diameter, but the same pitch. The drill size for the M7 screws is 238 thousandths of an inch. So I'm going to just run a drill down through these holes to make sure that I got enough clearance and then I'm gonna tap them out to M7. Everything should work out just fine going up to that size. So this is the drill size for an M7. Use a 1564 drill bit. I'm also gonna set the new oil pan on here just to make sure that the holes are gonna still line up well enough. I'm gonna go ahead and tap my M7 bolt holes while the lower oil pan is up against the inner oil pan just to make sure everything's gonna line up good when I get everything together. And I accidentally drilled out one of my M6 holes that I wouldn't have had to, so now I'm gonna have to turn it into an M7. So I got all my holes tapped with the M7. I'm gonna go ahead and check all the holes and make sure I have enough clearance through the lower oil pan that my holes line up well enough that I'm not fighting it. I'm also making sure I have enough clearance with these M7 washers in here because they're a little bit bigger. I think I'm gonna go ahead and drill out a couple of those holes that I'm gonna put them M7 screws in just to make sure that I have enough clearance.
there's 11 screws here, only nine go in. These two here actually are the ones that hold up the oil pickup tube. But these are all black, the other ones are not like this. These all these have like the washer integrated into the head. These are different than these that go on the outer oil pan. So we're getting ready to put this back together. This is what we got. We got the crank exposed. So we're getting ready to put the inner oil pan back up and I'm just gonna wipe this surface down. I've already cleaned it and made sure there wasn't any debris on it. But the oil's leaked down from the motor back onto the surface, so I'm just gonna clean it up. This is from the oil pan leaking. So we'll clean this up and get our inner oil pan ready to go on. I'm put a thin layer of gasket sealer on the front of this oil pan. I'm leaving the back alone until I get the pickup tube in there so I don't get my arm in it when I'm reaching inside. this pickup tube inside that pan and getting it started is kind of a trick. I use my finger to get each bolt started and then use my air impact to finish them. So I'm putting on the gasket sealer on the rear part of the oil pan now. Just an extra layer of protection. I use the 3 8 inch ratchet extension and swivel to get the five or six screws in on the oil pan above the large cross member that the motor mounts connect to. So I got all my bolts in, I hand torqued them all, and um, everything looks good, tightened up. I, I made sure I was all the way up before I tightened them, made sure that everything was lined up so I was actually then have a gap on the inner or the outer oil pan inner and the outer I torqued to 10 foot pound that's what I saw as the recommendations like maybe 10 to 15 somewhere in there so I made sure all my my uh, lines and stuff were out of the motor mount so the tranny lines and stuff so when I lower it back down nothing gets pinched and now I just have to change the oil filter let the motor back down and put my shroud back together up front and put oil in. This takes about 15 quarts of oil. So I'm gonna make sure we get that all in before we start it up. So um, I'm gonna wrap this video up. Um, it's been a lot of work doing the job and a lot of work filming it. The biggest pain in the butt is getting to those bolts underneath that um, cross member right here. This deal right here, that is a pain. Even getting them back in is a pain, but getting them back out was a nightmare because like I said, they're rounded off, they rusted and then they, they were rounded off. They weren't, they weren't, they wouldn't come out and they were really seized in there. Luckily I had an acetylene torch. I could burn them off and you can do that because as long as you don't burn anything and burn your um, training lines and wiring going through there, I was able to burn them off. And then once I did that and dropped the, dropped the lower oil pan, then I could get my burnt off bolts 
down with the inner oil pan because they're on the outside. Once you get this off, then you can get the inside bolts off and everything comes out and then you can work on it. Hope you got something out of this. I didn't see anybody that had problems with their bolt heads or what they did about it. So maybe that would be a little addition to other people's videos. Anyway, till next time, good luck with all your projects. Mm -hmm.